all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Champion of the world, Fernando Cochulito Montiel. La cadena. Gentlemen, I want a good clean fight. Caballeros, quiero, quiero una pelea limpio. Good luck to both of you. Buena suerte a los dos. Touch close. Go to the mano. Mark Johnson says that if Montiel is a, a Sugar Ray Leonard-like fighter. He's going to have to fight like Marvin Hagler. This we got to see. This has a making of being a very good fight. You know, earlier we were mentioning about Montiel coming from a fighting family. Also, Johnson himself, he comes from a family. I think he was a baby of the original fighters, and all of them in his family fought. He started the boxing when he was about three years old. Mark Johnson's a big fan of the sport and and has begun dabbling in expert commentary. He's uh, worked a couple cards out in L.A. as an expert commentator and does a good job. But Mark's not quite ready to be talking for a living all the time. Today, Thinks, go ahead. Earlier today in the Lobby Hotel, I ran across his father, Ham Johnson. Ham said that. The two losses he lost to Rafael, in addition to Rafael being, Marquez being a good fighter, was a lot because of the weight. The fact that Marquez was 118 pounder and when he fought, and that Mark is more comfortable back at 115 pounds. And in fact, he could have made 112 pounds for this fight, which could mean that he's in excellent condition. Mark claimed it was the first time he'd ever made the weight the week before the fight. Well, I think he realizes that his whole career is on the line in this fight. So he's going to fight about one of the greatest fights of his life. And there's a Hagler-like rush as he goes inside and starts going to the Montiel body right away. Mark Johnson living up to his pledge to try to get some pressure on Fernando Montiel. Well, another way he put it was to say, I may have to be the Mexican in this fight. Meaning that normally he was a flashy boxer but he is now the aggressor. Seemingly Montiel is having a lot of problems right now adjusting to Johnson. Johnson seems to be more comfortable as the fight is moving at this stage. Right. Well of course Johnson in addition to everything else is a southpaw. Montiel surely has experience in the past against southpaws but it's always something of an adjustment and now Johnson showing you that he's loose and warmed up in there. I don't remember the last time I've seen a fighter wear trunks as short as Montiel's old fashioned boxing trunks. Uh, Oscar likes to wear his trunks short like it. Watch Oscar De La Hoya in the next fight. He, yeah. he likes them short. He likes to dress like the old times. Yeah, you're right, man. Yeah. Yeah. I have a short memory, apparently. <laughs> he <wear> short trunks. <laughs> George Foreman wore short trunks the night he knocked out Michael Moore in 1994. Of course, that was because he was wearing the same trunks he had worn in the jungle 20 years before. Well, now Montiel showboating asked Johnson to hit him in the chin. But that's how Montiel has did this round. He's did nothing effective. Yeah. Well, we know they can both dance. Yeah. Let's see them fight. And after Montiel motioned to his chin, Mark Johnson leaned in, gave him a good body shot. And Mark is winning the fight, from my opinion, at this stage. He's doing more fighting. Uh, you demonstrated that you're better than his. Take advantage and box this guy. Use a th straight right hand. Come on. Yeah, you were doing okay. Yeah, you listen to me. You only doing shit now. You got to work today. Okay. You're faster than me. Come on. Take your shoulders, Mark. I won't need it. Work your shoulders, two and three. Down. More than one jab. Come on, cut the man off. Come on. 
on, you can baby. do this. Come on. Come on. Side to side. Mark the man scared to death. Okay. Mark the man is scared to death. In round one, Montiel, 8 out of 27 by CompuBox numbers. Johnson, 4 out of 26. Johnson missing on all 14 of his jabs, according to CompuBox. 53 total punches thrown by the two fighters, lots of dancing. And even though the CompuBox numbers favored Montiel, most of, it's, most of us at ringside, to our eyes, seem to feel Johnson was the aggressor in round one. Yes. One of the difficulties Montiel may be having is that, unusual for a boxer, he really likes to bang to the body, and he doesn't see that opening here no. against the southpaw. No, the southpaw, the angle and position of the body makes it very difficult to land effective body punches, particularly the left hook to the body, which is one of the favorite fighters of a lot of the Mexican fighters. Johnson still short with his jab, but Montiel staying at a distance. And Johnson's perfectly content to look at him from out there. Suddenly, uh too sharp Johnson for a moment anyway turned conventional uh, from his south course stance. Nothing happened. Now, no one has established any dominance yet. But I think after the next round or two, I think both corners are going to probably tell their guys to step it up because no one has really got any control. No, no, fight, nobody's done anything yet. And you got yeah. two father trainers here. So yeah. this will be a test to see which father trainer can help his son solve the puzzle faster. <laughs> I think it's going to get a little wild and willing in the next couple of rounds. Maybe the, no, no, no. Maybe the fathers will fight. Okay. He's locking his arm and you're hitting him. Don't Michael Ortega. That, okay? Let it go. Warning Mark Johnson for holding and hitting. In, his la in two of his last three fights, Johnson was penalized a total of four points, uh, four holding on, on most of the occasions, and it probably cost him the first fight against Marquez. He actually was computed as the winner in the first fight against Marquez in Corpus Christi. October of 2001 and for 90 minutes thought he had won the fight. Then they retotaled the scores and discovered they'd been way off and that in fact it was Marquez who had won the fight and Johnson graciously opened his locker room, gave the belt back, and said okay, take it to him. Gave him a rematch and got knocked out. That's good at being over the gracious. Big left hook of the fight landed by Montiel, and that seems to relax him just a little bit. I think both guys realize that they're not going to win this fight by outspeeding each other because the speed is so close that they're going to have to sit down and start fighting. Not much of an offensive yeah. fight so far. Johnson's yeah. only thrown 66 punches in two rounds. Montiel's only thrown 48, averaging only 24 punches per round. Montiel seems thoroughly thrown off by the southpaw stance of Mark Johnson. And the speed. He's probably not used to this type of speed in addition to the southpaw position. Little right hand lands inside for Johnson. At this point you look for anything that scores. Montiel's not going to win many fans fighting this way. Well, and if he may not win a fight fight this way neither. So Mark seems to be very comfortable right now as the fight is progressing. And I seem to see a little uncomfortable look on Montiel's face. Montiel wants to get in range, but he needs Johnson to come closer to do it. That means Mark controls the tempo of the fight. Montiel reaching to get a left to the body. Now the left took lands as Johnson leans in. Three fight 
weeks ago, Montiel won his version of the 115-pound world championship with a sixth-round TKO of a fighter named Pedro Alcazar in Las Vegas. Alcazar from Panama died a day and a half later in an incident so freaky that medical examiners still aren't exactly certain what it was that could have prompted Alcazar's death, given that ring death normally doesn't occur in a delayed fashion. And Alcazar was fine after the fight, was fine on the Sunday following the fight, then suffered brain swelling on Monday. Montiel does not seem to have been adversely affected by Alcazar's death, as some fighters are when they face the specter of ring death for an opponent. Yes, he seems to have recuperated from it. It hasn't bothered him at all. Well, he said it did bother him for a good long while, but um, he's certainly not the only outstanding fighter who has had that mark on his record. He seems to be, he seems to be boxing much better now. He seems to be getting more comfortable with the style. Yeah, but he okay. better start winning some rounds soon. Not much is happening in the fight, but of those things that are happening, more good ones happening to Mark Johnson so far than to Fernando Montiel. And we'll just start throwing you jabs, jabs, jabs. And we're going to start putting more pressure on now, okay? He moved back on you. The only thing you, need, you needed was to put your right hand in there. You almost get him. They say that speed kills in boxing. Right now, it's killing us. Too much speed. Only 54 yeah. punches thrown in round three. Either fighter ought to be able to get off 54 in a decent round. They combined for 54 in that round. They combined for 11 connects. In other words, no offense. So how do you score it, Harold? <laughs> OK, Jim, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing. Mark Two Sharp Johnson. Jim, i got to say something. I don't think it's the Southpaw style that's bothering Montiel. Uh -huh. Jim, step, step back, step when back. he was the champion a few years ago, I said him hit guys so hard that he'd put him out for 10 minutes. It's the power that's bothering Montiel. Johnson winning on those, uh, those real hard shots to the body that are really hurting Montiel. Well, I don't see him hurting Montiel, but I do see Montiel perhaps showing too much respect for a great old champion. I'll tell you what, so far, Ma looks very good here tonight. His most effective punch has been the straight left hand to the body. But he's putting a lot of pressure on and seemingly setting the tempo the way he wants it now. Montiel gets in a right hand. The referee, Mike Ortega, is the son of the great welterweight of the 50s, Gaspar Ortega. So much head movement that neither guy thinks he can hit the other guy. That's why I started talking about the referee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going on. <laughs> Maybe we can roll some Gaspar and take a highlight. Yeah, I don't mind seeing some of Gaspar again. right now. He was a very good action fighter. Fought everybody in the 50s. Five seconds. Action Gaspar would be better than this. <laughs> now Montiel finally begins to release his jab, and Johnson. Gets in another one of those hard shots to the body that Harold Letterman was talking about. I think eventually Johnson's going to try that right hand on the side of the right hook. That's what he's going to try to land after that sooner or later. Johnson with a hard left hand shot up the middle. On the chin that time. He's mixing it up. He's shooting it to the body and then he shot it on the chin. Step back, step, Mark step, Johnson's step, step. starting to get more aggressive. Certainly Montiel hadn't threatened him much in the first four rounds. There's no reason for Johnson to be holding back. Off what we've seen so far. Johnson able to get in a few left hand shots there as his right hand engaged heads, Montiel's right. Hard right hand shot to the body by Mark Johnson. This is another round in which Fernando Montiel has done. All but nothing after having come in Time. as the betting favorite in the fight. Mark, hey Mark, Mark, check this. You, 
you're winning by one punch. If you're winning, if you're winning, you're winning by one punch because all you're throwing is singles. You got to walk the boy down, cut him off, hit the man with threes and fours. You're not doing it. The boy is scared to death. All you got to do is throw 200 at second base. Go one to the brick to the body and brick to the hood. Now, let me tell you what you're not doing. You're cutting the man off, but you ain't doing nothing with it, son. You got to get loose. You got to get loose. You got to throw more punches. You got to be careful, but you got to throw more punches, okay? You keep th throwing those combinations. We're going to the fifth round and be aggressive. You got to be more aggressive. Are they sending him a mixed message? Emmanuel, be careful, but throw more punches? Or is that the right advice? I'm just saying, Emmanuel, is that the right advice? Be careful, but throw more punches, or do they neutralize each no, other? I, th I think that's a good, after what he went through with Marquez, he knows what can happen in one punch when he got knocked out in a good fight. So he's probably got to still be a little careful, because Montiel is a decent puncher still. But he's got to put more pressure on him and take, take some risk. Well, both trainers asked their fighters to do more offensively, and it's, it's Mark Johnson who seems to have listened to his dad as he begins to attack more aggressively. You heard Ham Johnson saying, you got to walk the man down and throw three and four punch combinations. Throwing one punch at a time isn't going to get it done, although, frankly, throwing one punch at a time has won four rounds for Mark Johnson, or so it would appear. I didn't hear what was said in other corners that they both may have been saying the same thing. Montiel has shown under 100 punches by CompuBox calculation in the first four rounds. That's a right hook. He goes down right. on a perfect right hook. And, and that's exactly what you said he was going to do, Emmanuel. Yep. Setting him Seven. up for the right hook. Hey, come here. Walk to me. Está bien. Está bien. There are three ugly red welts on Montiel's body from Mark Johnson's hard thrown right hands. And now with a right hook, Johnson has decked Montiel. And Montiel suddenly seems to realize that he's going to have to fight if he's going to get out of Connecticut with something other than an embarrassing look. I said earlier the fight was going to sort of get a little crazy around the fourth, fifth round because I could see that we both guys are going to get frustrated with not having any control. and has decided to step up and make the fight. At some point, Fernando Montiel is going to have to throw caution to the wind and go with Johnson, or he's just going to get erased here. Break, break. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Mira, suelo. Take suelo. You all right? So far missing from the Montiel Arsenal, except for an occasional burst here and there, the straight right hand, which is usually the bread and butter of conventional right. fighters against the southpaw. Whenever you're fighting a southpaw, normally your best shot is the straight right hand. But I've noticed outside of the one he just landed there earlier, he hasn't even shot that. For the most part, he's letting Johnson dictate the pace. And he's, he's really trying to anticipate what Johnson is going to do instead of taking the lead himself. I'm remembering the look of surprise in Oscar De La Hoya's face when he discovered that he just couldn't land his left hook against Pernell Whitaker. Montiel's experiencing a little bit of the same thing here tonight. Yes, he is. He's very, very good. It just stays a little confused, a little uncomfortable about the pattern of the fight. This was perceived as a crossroads fight for Johnson and a defining fight for Montiel. And so far, the crossroads is beating the definition. Yep. If you notice, Johnson is coming in. He's coming in with the body in motion as if he's going to throw a straight left to the body, which he's been throwing all night. But instead, he shot the right hand on the chin. You have to hit him in the chin. You have to go for the chin now and go inside. How are you feeling? Are you feeling okay? Hey, cut the man. Shoot him in. Take him out. Let me do this. Let's Come on, let's go. Let's go. Break your hands. Now we'll find out what Montiel is made of. Simple mathematics. He's fought five rounds. He's six points behind. Seven rounds to go, six points down on the cards. Montiel either has to win every round the rest of the way or find a way to hurt Mark Johnson. He's going to have to shoot that right hand with a lot of power. 
He's certainly going to have to stop waiting to land a left hook because he may not land a left hook in this fight. Well, you know, particularly with the southpaw position that Johnson is attacking him from. One punch at a time for Montiel. Johnson easily able to counter. Montiel misses wildly with the right. Johnson digs to the body with the right. Fernando Montiel only threw 31 punches in the last round, and he isn't mounting any real activity here. Johnson now beginning to paint him with body shots. Maybe he's trying to set him up for another hit punch by punching to the body on a continuous basis and then going right to the chin again. Montiel is going to have to start punching with power punches now. He's going to have to start yeah. punching, period. Yes, well, he's going to have to let his hands go. He's doing nothing in there. It's almost entirely one punch at a time by both fighters. Well, or one punch at a time by Johnson and no punches at a time by Montiel. It's going to be a dance contest now. Don't hold behind the head. from a baby for Mark Johnson. He doesn't have to do much to win these rounds. There Montiel finally manages to crack him with a little left. Johnson looks big at this weight. There was a, when he fought Marquez, it was Marquez who looked big against him. That's what he attributed a lot to the loss to us, that they really could feel the power from Marquez compared to fighting 112 and 115 pound guys. In addition to Marquez being a good fighter and a tremendous puncher. Montiel digs a right hand to the body. As Mark Johnson momentarily laid in there and allowed himself to get hit. Johnson comes back with a body shot of his own. Trade in the center of the ring and they punch each other after the bell in the most energetic moment of the fight. That's it, that's what I wanted to see right there. Montiel may not be as big or punch as hard as Marquez, but he's going to have to let some power shots go regardless. Otherwise, he's going to lose the fight. He's going to have to find a way to land double figures in a round. So far, he's landed single figures in every round of the fight. This is a nothing performance by Fernando Montiel. Johnson isn't doing all that much better, but it's enough for him to easily control the fight. You're winning the fight. Now you begin to pick it up. What round is this? Jab him to death. Here is a little bit of energy in this fight. Combat. Two guys going at each other instead of away from each other. Montiel's eyes beginning to swell on both sides. A mouse under the right eye, an abrasion over the left eye. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Five rounds to one, 59-54, Mark Two Sharp Johnson. Jim, you gotta give him an extra point for the knockdown in round five. In round six, Fernando Montiel at least got some offense going. I thought he'd maybe eat that that round. They gave him the sixth round hesitantly, but in any case, five to one, Mark Johnson. But I still maintain, he hurts you when he hits you, and that's the secret of Mark Johnson. So far, you'd have to say that uh, Mark Johnson is the master of the Montiels, having beaten Fernando's cousin seven years ago. And now easily controlling Fernando. But is there a small drop of blood on the bridge of Mark Johnson's nose? Is there an abrasion on Johnson's nose which could ultimately lead to something? Can't tell for certain from here. 
And I don't think if it is, it won't. Nothing to see. The new fights doesn't stop from cuts on the bridge of the nose. Wait, step back, step back. Get over there. It's the second time you're holding and hitting, okay? Let's go. Second warning of Johnson for holding and hitting. It's interesting. Look at Montiel's body. It's one of the few times I ever saw red bruise marks from the straight left hands he's been getting hit with in his body. Now Johnson turns conventional for a moment. Maybe looking to land a right hand. And he lands it twice, even after turning back to the southpaw stance. And yeah, there is a little blood on Johnson's right on the bridge of his nose, but it's not going to bother him. The same abrasion is on the bridge of Montiel's nose between the two swelling eyes. to try to get a left hand in and Johnson whacked him with a counter right. Johnson is outspeeding him at this stage too which is something that Montiel is not used to because he's always been the speedy fighter but the first time he's fighting a guy who's older but still a little bit more craftier and speedier than he is. Looser, more relaxed, Looser, yes. more in command of the more evening command. the event. Right. And comfortable. Hey, don't push him. Don't him. Fighting Mark Johnson's fight. And Fernando Montiel has found nothing to do about it. What's going on? You, you have to start. You got to start throwing punches. You got to start. In the near corner, or uh, near to you, Mickey Ward, with his fiance, Charlene Williams, and. Arturo Gatti with his fiance right next to him. This arena was the site of the first Mickey Ward Arturo Gatti fight, their trilogy, 30 rounds of intense face to face combat, now uh, a part of boxing history. And next to Gatti's fiance, that's Derek Smoke Gaynor over there, who was scheduled to have appeared against Juan Manuel Marquez in the main event here tonight, but fell out of the fight with a torn pectoral muscle. And he doesn't have anybody to kiss, neither. Nope, that's right. <laughs> no fiance, <laughs> nobody to hang on well, to and hug during the yeah. fight. Well, Ward uh, had a retirement party here last night, which is why both he and uh, Gaddy were here. I wonder what they think of this dance. Well, they're thinking that they landed more punches in one round than these yeah. guys are going to land in the whole fight. Well, they, they made up for this year, so that maybe that's what they were laughing about. <laughs> they decided to spend their time kissing <laughs> rather than watching the fight. Montiel wanted this fight against Johnson to define himself. Be careful what you wish for. Was he rushed? No, he's 24 years old. He's had enough fights, 27 fights. He should be at his prime fighting a 32-year-old ex-champion. 32 is, is old for fighters in these lower weight classes. But as we suggested at the opening of the fight, you know, sometimes great old champions have one big fight left in them. And so far, Johnson has shown that. You know, what we just saw in these exchanges is a, maybe the biggest problem with Montiel is the fact that he just isn't punching enough. As Jim said earlier, because when he does punch, they pretty much tit for tat in exchanges, but he's not punching enough. Just not letting his hands go, no, just not, not doing enough. Montiel was thinking about big See fights that? up the weight scale, maybe all the way up into the featherweight division. Johnson told us he's still looking for big fights, but he's going to be looking down the scale. If Johnson wins this fight, Emmanuel, he's going to call out American 112-pound champion Eric Morrell. That would be a great all-American unification fight. Great fight, especially when you consider two Americans fighting for a 112-pound championship. But, but there is a rematch clause, so Montiel can get a rematch. I don't know if they have to wait a fight before they do that, and I don't know who would want to see this fight again. 
paper watch. Yeah, and, <laughs> as a rule, a user act, you can have one fight. They usually insist on one match in between before you have the immediate rematches. Well, but certainly Mark Johnson isn't going to be fighting Eric Morrell between fights with Fernando Montiel. Why not? Let's go. At 32, he doesn't have time to waste. Maybe he will. No, see, Montel is having a good round this round simply because he's throwing punches this The round. best round he's That's had. Right. He's finally he's letting his punches. hands go yes. Yes. and trying to become the aggressor, which he needed to do seven rounds ago. I think he was just not comfortable earlier in the fight. I mean, now that he's getting a little bit more comfortable in the fight and probably desperate, he's fighting a better fight. And for the first time in a long time, Johnson backs up. And Montiel steps in and whacks him with a right to the body. Johnson misses upstairs. Montiel gets it a little counter. Best round of the fight for Fernando Montiel. The difference in the two fighters is that Johnson is more versatile. He can box and he's willing to bang. If Montiel would come out and set that same tempo for the next two rounds, he still could possibly pull this fight out. Maybe win by knockout. Don't throw just one punch. You got to throw more combinations. You, this is your championship. This is yours. You get, can't lose this. Come on, you got to throw punches. He's got, he's got nothing left. Let's go. We got to go. You let the guy score back. You got to. And don't make no mistakes, Mark. A lot riding on you. Stop thinking about tomorrow what you can do tonight, Mark. Come on, man. Let's get this job Come on. Come on. Boxers, man. Cut off. Cut him off. What you're hearing now from uh, Two Sharp Johnson's corner apparently is they they believe that they're winning the fight easily and now they're telling Johnson to box instead of to move ahead and punch. Power punches in round eight by CompuBox numbers. Montiel eight out of 26. Johnson only two out of 12. That's why it was Montiel's best round of the fight. Through twice as many power punches as Johnson. Needs to I, keep doing I, that. I, I think that Johnson's going to have to be very careful as the fight goes on. But I don't think he can just totally try to box him, set of wiggles. That's, he's in a mood tonight where I don't think he could just outbox this guy. But he's got to start getting more control because Montiel is getting more confident now. Montiel's accustomed to being a precision puncher. Right. He's well, got to forget well, about well, precision step, here. Step. Just let his hands go and try to throw a lot of punches. He's got a lot of hard punches. You got to punch him, not trying to go for a decision. He needs right, right. to try to I'm score at least a knockdown or two to pull the point gap up, or even <laughs> score a knockout. He's got to punch with power punches. We're trying to pinpoint the target. Just get some leather out there. Here's a good shot by Montiel. Counter right landed perfectly. Trying to follow up. Johnson clocks Montiel and drives him into the ropes, and then Montiel comes back with a combination. Suddenly, a fight is breaking out at the Mohegan Sun. <laughs> He punched him behind the And head. now this is going to be the punch behind hey, the right head. Here. Time. Time. All right. Now, he's warned him twice for holding and hitting. Let's see if he'll deduct for the punch behind the head. Okay. You punch him in the back of the head, he's going down, okay? You can't punch behind the head. All right? Be careful. No deduction. Well, I'm glad they didn't take a deduction because that was all in the heat of an exchange, I think. And when you're punching a lot of time, you can't I'm tell in. whether the guy's down or just bending over lower bobbing and weaving. I think Mike Ortega's done a nice job in this fight. Yeah, he could have deducted a point, which I'm glad he did. I think it was a good choice. I totally agree. Second that goes by now, benefit to Johnson, yes. an obstacle to Montiel. And he's trying to box there. You notice he's doing a jab to the head, something he hasn't been doing too much earlier. And trying to keep a little distance now. See? And he may have felt Montiel's uh, power too somewhere in the last round.
step, step back clean. Step back. Three rounds to go. It's still mostly one punch at a time. Yep. Johnson is boxing safe now. Come on. You gotta work the body skill. Skill. Got that. Look, look, look. We gotta go back to the body. Two and two times. We gotta go back to the body. Look. You cut your man off. You cut. You're cutting your man off. You're cutting your man off, man. But you ain't shooting but one punch. Man, you need two and three jabs, man. One ain't gonna get you there. And when a man charge you, you're all setting, but you ain't doing nothing with it. Keep them finished. We gotta knock this guy out. We gotta knock him out. You're strong, you're stronger than he is, but we gotta knock him out. This is your fight. This, just for, fight for yourself. We gotta fight. You gotta beat this guy and knock him out. Be alive. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Montiel's corner is giving him the right advice. And they're not waiting until the last round to do it. They're letting him know right now he's lost this fight unless he does something dramatic. Nine minutes for Fernando Montiel to seek a knockout. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through nine? Look at Jim. 87, 83, six rounds to three. Oh, too sharp, Johnson. Jim, without question, uh, Mark Johnson did hit him with a rabbit punch as Montiel was going down in the last round. But I'll be darned if I know why Montiel was going down. It just seemed like he was turning it, turning it away. But be as it may, Montiel, I thought, pulled out the last two rounds by getting a little bit busier. But I still say he's pretty far behind. He's in front. Keep him in front. Flurry of body shots by Mark Johnson there, doubling up with the right hook. Johnson with a little burst of energy, trying to reassume command of the fight. Yeah, where well, Montel was coming out to be aggressive, I think, and Johnson jumped on him and attacked him when he wasn't expecting, and moved Montel back on the defensive mode again. Well, that's Ham Johnson between rounds telling yeah. his son, you got to go back to the body. Yeah. Quit boxing him and go back inside and hit him. And it worked. Johnson has been a step ahead of Montiel through most of the fight, and Montiel still doesn't seem to feel as though he solved the puzzle in any way. Still waiting and waiting and waiting. Needs to be throwing punches and bunches. Good connect by Montiel as he landed a left and a right. Step back, step back, step back. Okay, you lock it in with your head, be careful. Montiel steals a look at his father in the corner. A right hand inside. Caught Johnson very well. Good Ball shot right hand inside. But it didn't hurt him. I'm not sure about that, Jim. Didn't hurt him badly, but it hurt him enough that he's now staying away. Yeah, he should throw more of those power punches because he has everything to lose and not too much to get in the, you know, in this situation here, because he's definitely going to lose a fight unless he keeps throwing those power shots. He being Montiel. Yeah, Montiel. Good left jab by Montiel, digging the right hand to the body. He's landed some pretty good solid punches his last few rounds. Uh, Time. Let me know when you're ready. And now Johnson gets a chance to rest after Ortega rules that Montiel hit him below the belt. All right. I told him already that's the second time. Don't retaliate. Ready? Ortega warning Johnson against any low blow retaliation. by Montiel and stunned Johnson and the second right hand caught him as well and a third straight right before the end of the round that was a good round for Montiel and now Montiel almost walked Johnson all the way back to his corner apologizing for the low blows after he landed three of his best straight right hands of the whole fight Montiel may have won the last three rounds you got to keep putting you got to put pressure use that right hand you got to put more pressure on this guy come on breathe in come on you got to keep throwing punches get punched hard 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 don't leave anything behind don't put anything away let everything go let everything go now here are uh, some of the 
things that have happened in this fight that have uh, drawn the ire of the referee holding other penalties, but nobody has been penalized as yet. Part of this has to do with the awkwardness of a southpaw and a conventional fighter. I'd say most of it has to do with the awkwardness of a southpaw against Link a conventional Link fighter. Link You're probably right, Jim. I don't think there's any real motivation for either guy to foul here. We've just gotten hung up with each other from time to time. And it, it appears that Mantio is definitely coming on, but can he come on with enough? Remember, there's a two-point round mixed in that could be telling. Providing that Montiel doesn't score a knockout, he's going to have to at least try to score at least a couple of knockdowns in order to pull a decision out. Well, instructively, I think if he wins every round the rest of the way, including these next two rounds, 10-9, but he winds up one point short on Harold Letterman's right. scorecard because of the two points that were scored for the knockdown. And that's why right now the referee is a very crucial in this fight because if he takes a point from anybody, it can be crucial the way this fight is moving. Time in. Second time, Mark. Let's go. The fight is getting closer and closer on the scorecard, except for those knockdowns. And now both fighters are one foul away from a point deduction for Johnson. Either holding or hitting or a low blow would get him a point deduction. For Montiel, a low blow would certainly do it. seven rounds to figure out that the straight right hand was the way to score. Straight right hand. There's a good left hook to the body by Montiel, and another one, his two best body hooks in the whole fight. Yes, most, most, most of the last two rounds he's coming on, he's winning those rounds. He's finally getting his left hand to work because he's finally setting it up with a straight right. There's another straight right that lands flush on Mark Johnson's face. He's fighting and not dancing. This is a big round for Montiel. Johnson digging to the body again, trying to take some of the steam out of Montiel. But at this stage, Montiel landing a right and a left and another left. It looks like another good round for Montiel. Let's see. and feeling the need to fight his way back into things as Montiel wins the 11th. And now they're going to walk each other around the ring again as the two seem to be becoming very close <laughs> friends in there. I want, I want everything out of you now. What up with that? Everything. Well, we saw that we got it die here. Get it. We're going to die here. That's it. This is it. Everything you have. Come on, let's go throw. Get that courage out. They're trying to steal. Come on. They're trying to steal. They're trying to steal with that low blow. You need this, y'all. You gotta have this. You wanna bring it home? This is the round. Body shot. Body shot. Yeah, two and three. You're breaking them. Get your rhythm. Everything you need. Let's go. I want blood. I want blood. This is do or die. I wanna see blood on the floor. I want do or die. This is it. This is it. Go for it. Sounds like we're gonna have an exciting 12th round. Well, the corners are certainly excited. And I think that uh, Too Sharp Johnson's corner is trying to whip home a great old okay, touch him up. Touch tired him up. horse. Him Mark, let's go. Power shots touch in round 11. Montiel, go. 19 out of 49. Right, Johnson, 10 out of 22. Fight has tightened up. And now we wonder if some of those early rounds on the scorecards might have slipped to Montiel here and there, which would give him a chance to be in the fight coming to this last round. Yeah. 
do you have it coming to the 12th? <laughs> okay, Jim, I see it as a very close fight. Six rounds to five, 105, 103, Mark Tushov Johnson. He's got that extra point for the knockdown in round five. But I tell you, in round eight, Fernando Montiel just stopped fighting scared. He started moving forward, landed good shots. Conditions been the difference in the last four Wait, rounds. Him out. Certainly, Step. I think Fernando Montiel pulled out the last four. Right. So, 6 5, Johnson. But a two-point margin, not a one-point margin because of the knockdown in the fifth. That could wind up being the critical moment of the fight. This is a slip. No knockdown. Stay right there. No knockdown. How many times have you heard a father say to his son, I want to see blood on the floor? <laughs> Montiel needs a knockdown very much. To Hard left hook by Montiel. Johnson comes back with a right hook of his own. Montiel finally letting his hands fly freely and hurting Mark Johnson in the center of the ring. But Johnson coming back with aggression. Great body shot by Mark Johnson. A left right to the solar plexus. Momentarily slows Montiel down. That hard left-hand body shot that Johnson threw may be just enough to stem the tide. Johnson lands upstairs as Montiel yeah. lands to the body. Yeah. Instead of showing the left hand to the body, now he's wiggling it right on top. And Johnson lands again with the left-hand counter. A 12th round rally by Mark Johnson may be just what he needs just to enough the to get, You have to ensure us. Referees did a great job in this fight. Rout finally warms to it. Another leg. The left hand on the chin has been a big factor right now for Mark. Best action of the fight here in the 12th round. Yeah. Montiel wobbles Johnson with the left hook. Yeah. They should have started this in the seventh round. on the face of Eric Fernando Montiel as he fights a spirited last 30 seconds but Johnson hangs on now both fighters are going to celebrate I thought Johnson won very narrowly the decision could go the other way I think anything's possible but to my eyes, Johnson won the first seven rounds. That would make everything yes. a moot point beyond that. I, I agree with the scorecard of Harold Adam on this year. I think it's a very good scorecard, about 115, 120. So Letterman gives the last round to Mark Johnson, sealing the deal. Mark Johnson leans across the ropes to us and says the old man prevails again. He likes himself as an old fighter now, 32. Power shots in the 12th round by CompuBox. Calculation, Montiel 18 out of 52, Johnson 10 out of 31. Johnson's were strategically placed. And there was a moment when Montiel was really coming on and Johnson landed a hard body shot with the left hand that yeah. backed Montiel off. Yeah, Johnson fought a real good fight. Tactical fight. Yeah, and Montiel is a good young fight. I think if he had, he'll grow from this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Joseph Dwyer scores the bout 114 to 114. He has it even. Melvina Lathan scores it 115 to 112. And Steve Epstein scores it 117 to 110 for the winner by majority decision. And new. Goal.